And now let's uh, tell you about uh, the meeting of the southern leaders uh, today, uh, yesterday, uh, where they are asking for the restructuring of the nation. The southern leaders have again met to continue their dialogue on how to keep the country on the right path. This time, they asked their colleagues from the north to re renegotiate Nigeria to avoid the country swerving in the wrong direction. The leaders drawn from the three geopolitical zones of the south gave credence to the 1963 constitution, which operated a regional system of government. They believe any constitution with a, that semblance can fix the country. They said the National Assembly's rejection of the proposal for devolution of power was against popular demand. The southern leaders vowed to press on with their demand until the issue was brought to a conclusion. It's in unclear terms that the country has gone through a civil war once and it's not likely to survive another one. Therefore, to have a peaceful Nigeria where all citizens cooperate and live together in peace, we must sustain the principles of equity and justice which were the basis of our independence constitution and necessity constitution negotiated by our founding fathers with the British colonial authorities. In this wise, we come for sacrifices on all sides. We therefore, we, and, and therefore call for a meeting of where many leaders from the south of Nigeria, the Middle Belt, and the North to discuss on ways of rescuing Nigeria from destruction. So I would advise them and those of you who may be interested to go back and read the conference report. That report was meant to make Nigeria governable. As we can all see, there's crisis everywhere now. Crisis. And if that report of 2014 had been followed, this crisis will disappear. So the advice of this body is that those who govern us, those who rule this country, must go and refresh themselves on those decisions of the last conference of 2014. Well, now to our major story of the day. It's been a debate of what is constitutional, ethical, or morally just. The number one citizen has been away for three months, 93 days if you are counting in days that uh, he left the country. And now he stayed in London for 92 days. So here's the debate. Some people say the president has not done anything wrong. He's fulfilled the constitutional provision as far as the situation is concerned. Of course, the president transmitted a letter to the National Assembly before leaving the country in, uh, in June for medical vacation. He handed over to the vice president, Yemi Oshimbajo, who now acts as the acting president. Now, some Nigerians have staged a peaceful protest in March, uh, in March to uh, Abuja, asking the alien president to resume or resign. They said 90 days is too long for the number one man to be away from his country without any explanation to the people that voted him into office. Well, is your call justified? Now let's get talking on this one. I have the co-convener of the resume or resign protest, Deji Adeyonju, who joins us from our Abuja today. And I also have uh, 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 the personal assistant to the president on social media, Loretta Anoche. Thank you so much, both of you, for joining us on the program. If I would begin with you, the uh, 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 you is it justified when, legally speaking, the president has satisfied the provision of the law that your group is still asking him to resign? Well, Sean, thank you for having me on the show. You know, the, the issue of um, it being justified or not, you know, what our group is asking is very simple. You will recall that in, you know, in, um, when the president was leaving, the president, you know, had um, suggested that um, he did not give a time frame for, um, for returning to the, back to the country. And um, as such, you know, our group and the coalitions that we are working with on this, on the resume or resign, 
had considered that, you know, when it was day 30, the president was, was gone, we said, okay, maybe the president will be back you know, when it is day 60. When it became day 60, we said, okay, maybe the president will be back on day 70. Today we are in day 93, you know, 92 going to 93, and the president is not back. For how long, you know, will the president be away? Will the president be away infinito? You know, those who are saying that uh, the Constitution guarantees the president to be away indefinitely from the country have been economical with the truth. You know, Section 144 is specific. The president is sick by his own admission and the admission of his aides. That's, you know, they have admitted the president is sick. When the president is sick, you know, the right thing must be done in the letters of Section 144 that a medical panel of inquiry must be set up. We do not know whether President Mohamed Buhari is fit to continue in office. The, the whole attempt that people are saying that because some governors went to see him and these, you know, those governors are not medical doctors. They don't have, they cannot be able to ascertain whether the president is sick or not. Even the acting president does not know what is wrong with the president. You, the media, don't know what is wrong with the president. We, the people, don't know what's wrong with the president. So what our group is saying is that the president needs to come back home and resume, you know, and, 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 dem and work on the mandate that he promised the people. The president must, as a matter of urgency, you know, come back or resign because that's the honorable thing to do. And again, we are saying that, you know, Section 144 is the only thing that can help solve the problem. Because even if they rush back the, the president back like they always do, they rush him back, once they see there's public outcry, then they take him out again and they bring him in again. Like they've been going on and on and on and on this since January 2016. You know, in, cumulatively, this year the president has been out for about 144 days. He was out earlier in the year. He spent, I think, about 50-something days, and now again he's out. You know, that's not why the people of Nigeria voted the president. And, um, you know, we are just, <coughs> because even if they bring him back now, we don't think the president is fit to continue in office. It's only the medical panel that can, um, which he's also, his personal physician will be a member, that can actually tell us whether the president is fit to continue in office. For the past 92 days that the president has been away from the country, he's obviously not fit to run the country. Let me bring in uh, Mr. Loretta Onoche, who is uh, uh, who helps the president on social media. I'm very sure now because this conversation, that social media is a gog about whether or not when the president will be back. Uh, is the presidency under any pressure, morally speaking, because the justification leg legally is there, what the president needed to have done, he did, but morally speaking, uh, is the president under pressure to return to the country or due to the demands of this group? Thank you, Shewu, for having me on this program. I would like to say uh, that you have already enumerated some of the things I thought I would be saying, like that the president has acted constitutionally, he has not broken any law, he has not broken any, any rule, nor any constitutional provisions in our nation. And I'm back to your question. I'll say that the presidency is under no pressure at all from any circles, except, of course, uh, the few, a handful of people uh, who are not happy that the president is still alive. I would say that it is very uh, insensitive of anyone uh, to begin to call on somebody who is unwell uh, to, to, uh, to, re, uh, to, to resume. That is, he should forget about his, uh, about his Ill, Ill health and then return to the country. Governance is going on. The role of the president is that of coordination. Uh, uh, presidency is not about splitting firewood where one man has, the, uh, you know, has his two hands on an axe. Governance is a collective uh, duty. He, the president has a team. And like you rightly said, Shen, when he was leaving, power was fully transmitted to the vice president. And today we have an acting president. And when the acting uh, president began his duty, as the acting president. I remember people like uh, my, uh, my, my brother here, uh, uh, Deji. They applauded him. They said he was doing a very good job. They said he was doing an excellent job. And we said, hallelujah. And then uh, later on, they said, 
the vice president was, uh, the acting president was acting better than the president. We said glory to God because it is still the same uh, government. But after they had gone through those two phases, they now found out that things were moving on smoothly uh, as we speak today in the area of uh, corruption, 37.5 uh, uh, million uh, uh, dollars worth of property linked to Mrs. Deza and Imadweke had been forfeited. 42 months of pension arrears that was inherited from the former government has been paid. And as we speak, as of July 26 or so, the July pension had been paid for last month. Um, as right, we uh, also we, uh, speak uh, for uh, the Ms. first time we need to years. take a breather. Like uh, and when we return, we explore new angles to this story. My guests are still with us on the program, the Jade Yanju, Loretta Anoche. Stay with us, everyone. We'll be back.